What is going on guys? It is your boy Hilza and today we're diving deep into data encryption with AES-256 and Go. In this tutorial, we'll examine every component within our main function to gain an understanding of their pivotal roles in safeguarding data. So without further ado, let's jump right into the code. First, let's prepare the data we want to encrypt. So I'll say data. If you're a beginner, a variable is just a container that stores information. In this case, our variable will hold private medical records. Now we have to convert this screen into a byte slice because cryptographic algorithms require data to be in a binary format, meaning it needs to be expressed in a sequence of zeros and ones. So we'll call this plain text and we'll populate it with the data. Perfect. Now let's enhance the security of our data by generating a 32 byte encryption key. This step is important, especially for AES-256 encryption because it requires exactly a 32 byte key length. The length of this key is directly tied to the security and the complexity of the encryption process. So in simpler terms, the longer the key, the more resistant it is to security breaches. So we'll create an encryption key, making a 32 byte slice. Then we'll use ran.read to ensure that our key is secure and composed of random numbers. So I'll say key. Perfect. And that'll be byte and 32. And then we'll say if error of that ran dot read and populate that with the key and then we will handle our error error generating random encryption key perfect I think that looks great in this next step we'll create an AES block cipher. Think of it as a fundamental tool for keeping data secure. This cipher processes data in fixed 128-bit blocks, similar to a lock and key system. The block is like the lock and our key is the secret code to access it. We'll use the crypto slash AES package to make this happen. Now, once again, the block cipher is vital because it lays the foundation of data security. It processes our data in fixed size blocks, which adds a strong layer of protection. I'll add the key in that. Always check for the errors. And if you like the shortcuts I'm using, I'm using a program called Pieces. Check that out. Return it. Perfect. Looks good. Now we'll introduce the Gawa counter mode, GCM, which is a powerful method for encryption. GCM does two key things. It encrypts data, making it unreadable to unauthorized eyes, and it adds a tag for checking the integrity of the data during transmission. We'll set up GCM using the crypto slash cipher package. All right, and in simpler terms, GCM is like adding a digital seal to our encrypted data, ensuring that we ensuring that it remains intact and hasn't been tampered with during the transmission. So we'll say GCM slash not just by area and we'll use cipher dot new GCM and we'll populate that with the block and then we'll handle our error. We'll say error setting up GCM mode. And then we'll return that. Perfecto. It's looking good so far. Looking, looking good. So to add an element of unpredictability to our encryption, let's create a nonce, which is short for number used once. This nonce ensures that every encryption operation is unique and secure. We'll generate and fill it with unpredictable data using the crypto ran and the crypto slash IO packages. All right. Think of a nonce as a unique identifier for each encryption, like a lottery ticket number. It ensures that even when 
it ensures that even if we encrypt the same data multiple times, each encryption is unique and secure. So we'll say not make, I'll take a bite. And we'll say GCM dot not size. Handle the arrow. IO. Go use IO. Read full. And that will take ran dot reader slash. Why do I always say slash? But <laughs> not. And then we'll handle the arrow. Great. Like Tony the Tiger. All right, almost done guys. Now we've reached the heart of the process. We'll use the GCM seal function that helps us turn our data into secure unreadable, into a secure unreadable form to protect it from prying eyes. Okay, so we'll say ciphertext. Then we'll say gcm.seal. And that will take a nonce for authentication, another nonce, plain text, and a nil. Perfect. Now we need to make this. Sorry, that was my dog. <laughs> now we need to make this more uh, readable and versatile, suitable for various applications. So we'll use a hexadecimal. We'll convert the and convert it into hexadecimal. Sorry, guys. And that'll take the cipher text. Now the, all that's left to do now is print out the results using the FMT package, of course. Say original data. There we go. And this will be the encrypted data say encrypt, encrypted data perfect now we're all done you see this guys that was super quick and painless super quick and painless uh, we're, we prep the data then we generated a 32 byte length key then we added the block cipher we created the block cipher it's looking good then the GCM mode, then the nonce, perfect. So really all that there's left to do now is to show you the final result. So uh, we'll use, a second guys, just checking over things. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Looks good. So we'll say Command J. And then we'll say go run main dot go. And there we go. We see our original data, which is private medical records, which is a screen. And we see it, the encrypted data, which is encrypted, which is private medical records or is now encrypted into ciphertext. Perfect. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. These videos are going to get better and better, more complex each time. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Holla at your boy.